Well, hello, everybody. You are listening to the Sandcast with Triborn and Travis Mawerder, brought to you by our friends over at VolleyballMag.com and Wilson. And today we have a special episode, uh, since it is kind of freezing outside, at least for California. Uh, we brought in some of our snow volley champions. <laughs> Katie Spieler <laughs> and Emily Hartong are in the house to uh, explain to us what the hell happened over in, in Russia. It's <laughs> a good way to put it. We were in Moscow for 48 hours, so we're not quite sure oh, what, what happened there. It was a whirlwind, but we're back All right, and we're so, alive. So snow volleyball is now a sport. And the FIVB has picked it up and they're trying to create a tour now. And how did you guys get roped into this? Carissa got an email from USA Volleyball and she texted me about 10 minutes later and was like, let's do this. Sounds really (laughs) weird. That's our kind of volleyball. (laughs) Um, I texted her right back and said I was in. Anything that Carissa is all in for, I'm, I'm ready to go with her. Um, and then we thought up some good additional players Emily was my first thought, and Allie Wheeler as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's three person volleyball, but you have a sub? Yes. yes. So it's like a hybrid of, of your specialty, indoor, your ex specialty. Yes. Uh, and what, you just sub whoever you want at any time, basically? Yeah, you're allowed to do that whenever, just bring a sub in. But we made like a good rotation where we just went by our numbers. So, mm-hmm. Chris being one. Me two, Katie three, and Allie four. And every game we just rotated through, so the odd one out would sit out next game. So it was more like we just want everyone to play because mm-hmm. we flew all, all the way out here rather than like a real strategy of like, no, you're the, you're the bench player, you're the reserve, you might not play if we keep winning. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> There's cohesion with everyone who was on the court, so okay. it turned out to be okay. Were you guys ever in a rhythm where you're just like, all right, we're just going to let this ride? Or you just kept subbing just because you were winning either way for the finals was like the only time that we we kept like me and chris in so we could hit two right and then katie and and ally we just like switched that one and mm-hmm. say the only time but every other time it was just like oh i'm not this time or, right 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 mm-hmm. other like teams it. were getting pretty intense though like a girl would shank two balls and they're like you're out like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're, we weren't on that level right. quite yet. And you didn't have a coach, right? Right. We yeah. didn't have a coach. So just completely winging it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And took home the gold. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Flew out there, had to get the gold. Yeah, so. really. Pull yeah. in. You had to pull in some, some serious prize money. Yeah. From what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, totally worth it. The conversion of Russian, what is it? I don't even the know. Rebel? Rebel? <laughs> yeah. If we convert it to the Russian money, it sounds a lot. So oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. keep it in. Don't don't translate or convert yeah. it over. Yeah. Thirteen million Russian coins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Thirteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I saw that when you guys got there. The well, can you just kind of explain to us like the equipment and so the rules are it's what three sets to 15, best two of three, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. And then equipment, I saw you had a, an adventure to get some cleats, yeah. Um, can you just walk us through like when you just got off the plane to Russia, figuring out how we get all of our like snow cleats and how did you find the site and all this stuff? Like, what was it like? Um, well, they had organized everything. So when we landed, Carissa was in contact with um, Jane, who we dubbed our MVP. She was like <laughs> the organizer uh, who made sure everyone had transportation from the airport to the hotel. And we waited. What time was it when we landed in Moscow? I think we landed at like 3 a.m. Yeah, on we the were day of playing. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't. Oh. We didn't know who was picking us up, so we were like waiting outside. Then we went back inside. <laughs> Found out the driver was there the whole time, just wasn't um, holding up a sign or had a wrong sign or something. (laughs) So then when we got to, I think that was about the same time we found out the cleats bag had been lost. Um, Loy Ball was in charge of that, and the airline had lost the cleats for him, and so he informed us. So the whole morning of, I guess, uh, the day of competition, we were like, okay, 
We don't have cleats. I don't know how we're going to play. But we ended up getting cleats like an hour before our first game and, yeah, really set the tone from there. (laughs) How does one find snow cleats in Russia? Um, Well, it's basically soccer cleats. So we had Jane drive us to just like the mall that was close by and she didn't speak like perfect English. So it was a little hard to communicate but she just drove us to a mall and then we it opened I think like 40 minutes before our first game so we were just waiting there and then we just sprinted through the mall and found an Adidas store and that was the ticket that had like a lot of and it's soccer cleats is what we got and they actually worked super well in the snow which was surprising like I think I'm definitely going to keep mine just in case I need to run around in the snow but yeah, yeah, good pair of cleats, other than the first two were missing, like, on the toe part. <laughs> so like, we had a couple <laughs> wipeouts as we were trying to just go forward for a ball. But otherwise, yeah, they were perfect. I couldn't imagine playing without cleats. Yeah. It, it would have been impossible. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you have just in case you get the urge to yeah. play snow <laughs> volleyball. And we, we got two or pairs. Or soccer. <laughs> or soccer. Actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or softball, join a league. It's true. It'll work. Yeah. It's universal. True. <laughs> so what, what was the, was it pool play? And then bracket play? Yeah, it was a modified pool play, I think. Okay. So kind of what the FIVB is doing on the beach scene right now. Yeah. Pretty sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's the same. So how did, what was the process like figuring out a strategy? Because now you have three players as opposed to two. You're on snow and not on sand or dirt, as you've recently experienced yes. as well. <laughs> um, like, because I know with three players, did you have like a full-time setter type deal? Um, yeah, we tried to organize it like that. Katie was setting for us a lot, and then um, Carissa was setting. But we just had one at the net for blocking. Sometimes we kind of switched it up. A couple times we had two, and then one would pull and just play like line defense, and the other would take Angle, who was back already. So the blocker was just moving laterally, like covering whoever was going to get the ball. Um, but it wasn't really, I mean, there was some shots coming in. There wasn't a lot of hard hitting to where you're like stuffing balls. The men's, we were watching them and they would have two blockers up. So for the women's, it wasn't really necessary. But it worked out pretty easy, like yeah. pretty well for us. I liked I our strategy. In um, when we were serving, I would be back on defense, me or Allie, whoever was setting and in at the moment. And then Chris or Emily would be up blocking and then the server would run in. Um, kind of play two down defense in that scenario. And then when we were in serve receive, I was setting me or Allie and we had two back serve receive. So it worked out pretty well. We had a blocker up usually. Yeah. And then the other blocker, if they start at the net, would just pull off and play defense. Did it feel like you guys were playing beach volleyball or did it feel maybe more indoor like? It felt more beachy to me. Okay. Just like the proximity, like where to be coming off the net and stuff. Mm -hmm. We're indoor. You don't have to like cover so much ground. Right. But with three, it was, there's a couple of times in plays where I'd like turn around and I just like pulled like just in a weird spot. You didn't have to pass it to get set. Yeah. Like on the beach. Exactly. You'd have to pass it first. Whereas, I mean, you were in oppo indoors, right? Outside. Outside. Okay. Well, sometimes they're just setting you. And you're not really doing anything else. You're just a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was just thinking, could be a little bit like that where you just block and hit the whole time. But it's threes, so it's tricky. Yeah. I I've like never loved, played threes. I loved the combination. Like, it really felt to me like all of the things I liked about indoor were there and all the things I liked about beach were there. So three was actually, for me... Like, super cool. On defense, I felt like I could read a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Whereas in beach, I kind of have to be super patient and stopped because people are so good that I can't kind of read and go Mm -hmm. for it. So I really like that aspect. And then just having one more person, it felt like really good energy on the court. Like, we were always laughing and, like, high-fiving. So it had that team aspect of indoor. Um, But then also you're touching the ball all the time because there's only three. There's not six. Right. I like it. it. Sounds really fun. Yeah, yeah. It was Except really for fun. freezing, I probably yeah. my hands would be fully numb. <laughs> yeah, felt like also, frostbite. I was wondering, do they call handsets? Like, are they calling your sets? And you have like big gloves on? Like, <laughs> <laughs> come on, yeah. give me a break. I got Mickey Mouse gloves on. 
I don't remember them calling any. I had some questionable ones too. Like, oh, okay, fine. That was good. But yeah, they didn't really. They weren't too much on that. Okay. I saw them call like two sets, and they're really bad. <laughs> Um, but I think with, so the ball was a specific snow volleyball. Oh, really? So it felt much different from like a normal volleyball. And I found it way easier to hand set, like even with gloves on than bump setting. Cause it was like hard to get power behind it hmm. almost. So the handsets that we had on our team, I don't think were terrible, but they were pretty loose on calling. And yeah. the, were you wearing like spandex shirts? Cause I'm, if you have like a snow jacket on, you can't bump set through that right yeah Maybe we didn't know, we know. warmed up in like the snow jackets uh-huh. like a invisible cross court little pepper right. but um yeah passing was like kind of impossible with the huge right. puffy jacket yeah we probably each wore like four to five layers mm-hmm. of spandex or something like yeah that. like just tight, tight like fitting yeah. spandex shirts under and then um i wore like a big kind of cotton jacket on top mm-hmm. and that was fine to pass mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but hands and toes were like just the worst trying to keep those warm oh, yeah God. and you all had gloves some people, uh, we all played yeah. with gloves but some teams didn't and their hands were like pink yeah. like red yeah. Oh. Crazy. <laughs> no i'm good yeah, yeah. like I'll, I'll go snowboarding with double gloves on and i'm like in pain because yeah. my hands are still cold yeah that was, that was brutal. the hand warmers and foot warmers were super key oh yeah. yeah what you had them in your pockets or something i had my hand warmers in my pockets and in my gloves like the little pouches right up that you pop the first time mm-hmm. yeah smart yeah i had two in my shoes <laughs> one on like the bottom i think did you have two like two? under yeah. your arch um, under just my toes, all toes. Sounds so comfortable. That's <laughs> so comfy. I just had a big, like, sandbag in my shoe the whole time. Yeah, it was, it was all really interesting. We just went with it. It was fun, though. It was so much fun. I'm wondering, did you guys talk to anyone from, like, the FIVB or anything to see where this, where they want this sport to go or what their plans are for it? Because it's kind of in that... They had a few exhibitions last year, um, and it's, it was kind of a joke at first. But now this event seems a little bit more legit, besides the fact that they're not really paying yet. Um, is there any? Uh, did you hear anything about the future of the sport or where they're trying to go with it? There wasn't that much specific talk, but we know that they're like trying. The end goal is to make it a Winter Olympic right. sport. Um, but they were super into having a team from the USA. Like Mm -hmm. we had a lot of people come up to us and ask for like interviews or pictures and just be like, yeah, it's so great to get like a USA team out here. Um, so I think they're just trying to get like different countries involved and expand from just the European teams. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll definitely like see how it goes. We're not sure. Like no specifics. I know. When I was covering the Olympics this past year, so they had a, a snow volleyball exhibition there, and they had like Emmanuel and Alice Own playing it. So they had like pretty big players in it, and I mm-hmm. remember they said that they were trying to get it in the 2026 mm. Olympics. That was kind of their goal. Hmm. So there's what, like two or three more snow volleyball events this year, too? Yeah, yeah there's are, a few. Are more. you guys doing the snow volleyball tour? <laughs> I think there's eight tournaments, actually, There's eight for the year. Um, this was the only one where the provider <clears throat> funded the flights, the hotel, everything. So if that's the case, we're, we're all in. But we're not going to go pay out of pocket to play no. snow volleyball. <laughs> yeah. What was the vibe like at the tournament? Was, it, like, was there a good crowd? Because just the one that I watched that was in <laughs> Korea, like... They actually had a decent crowd there, and they had a DJ, like, blasting music. I didn't know, like, what was it like in Russia? Uh, It was different than that. I think the weather (laughs) (laughs) had a lot to do with it. Um, It was really cold, so you didn't see hardly any spectators. I think on Saturday, uh, which was, like, the finals day, they had mandated, like, (laughs) Russian, it looked like military officers or something, uh, they were on the stands, and there's probably about 20 to 30 of them, just like full black suits, like decked out, and just standing there, like not really cheering or anything, but like showing face. So um, I don't know. Other, we saw clips like as the tournament went on from other venues when I think it's a little bit warmer, and it looked like they're kind of by like a mountain that was had ski resorts there, 
And that atmosphere looked really cool. They had people in like jacuzzis and people were drinking beer and it was a lot more um, just it's like kind a of ski resort vibe, right? Yeah. yeah. And that I could, cause snow volleyball, I could see it, it would be fun. Similar atmosphere, like beach volleyball coming mm-hmm. out and like hanging out with friends and watching like a cool, fun sport. But Moscow wasn't <laughs> quite there yet. Russia's, <laughs> Russia tends to be a little intense. Yeah. <laughs> a little cold. A little cold yeah. and yeah. intense. I don't see them like out there like drinking and jacuzzi and. Yeah. yeah. They did Maybe. sell some alcohol and like a little <laughs> ice shack thing. So <laughs> some people may have gotten some in there. Oh, man. I think every listener is just picturing something completely different. Like we, we have no idea what this actually looked like. We're just leaving ice shack up to the interpretation. How many people? Have, how many people have actually been to Russia, and then getting this picture is pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm just imagining like Rocky Four. Like they, <laughs> you guys were just like hanging out in a barn, and they just had like <laughs> courts in the middle of a farm. <laughs> well, the stadium court had a lot of potential. Like it was yeah. really a nice it setup. It was a cool stadium. But because it was so cold, you like didn't see anyone. I think for our first game in the quarters on Saturday, Eric Shoji came out because he was playing there <laughs> at the time, coincidentally, and um, he was like the only one in the stands, and that lasted like <laughs> five minutes until he went into like the VIP room that was overlooking the court too. Yeah. So I, but yeah, I think other events probably have a lot more people. It would be cool if the U.S. put on a decent one at like Mammoth. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. Be so cool. Yeah, that would be rad. Because then we could get the de- like if you put it like at kind of the base of one of the mountains, because then you could have like people watching from the restaurants and stuff. And you could have the yeah. DJs already there. Yeah. And it's already a built in fun. You're menu. in California, so you're gonna get at least some of the fan base might be down to go take a weekend up Yeah. In, yeah. More yeah. like Mammoth. Aspen where they play the mother load. Ooh, yeah. That'd be cool. Turn it into that kind of uh what do you call those tournaments? For fun tournaments. Yeah, like the <laughs> like, fun. Just like the independent ones. Independent, yeah, 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 like yeah. where everyone's there Indie. to like party and hang out for a few days. Yeah. That would be sick. That you guys would are be. onto something. <laughs> and did they, did they create... Snowcast. <laughs> the snowcast. That, has, that has to be the name of the podcast. Yes. <laughs> done has done a deal. nice ring. It does. Yeah. <laughs> um, did they have to make snow? No, oh, no. Or it was just falling. Was it <laughs> yeah. snowing the whole time? It, it got yeah. a lot of inches. I don't know how much, but it, it kind of helped like the situation, just like looking around yeah. and being like, what are no, what if it's, nice what if it's just hammering snow and then like the ground is six inches higher, like halfway through the match? And, like, <laughs> you're, like, Where's the lines? Is it regular beach volleyball lines? Um, yeah. So they yeah. just have to like keep pulling them out probably. It never got like that bad and it yeah. was snowing pretty hard at one point. Uh, in the evenings it would be like dark outside and just like snow everywhere and it was pretty awesome like to soak that all in but i couldn't imagine it getting like so severe to where it's you like could four feet stuff. overnight and yeah. just like it's like waist deep volleyball <laughs> I mean, you guys go out and shovel your court like before you play and just push it all onto like the right side so like, katie's yeah. jumping off a four foot ramp yeah i, I needed that you, like, you dive and like your feet are like sticking up <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> get stuck. I feel like it probably helped having snow come down during the match so it wasn't just straight up ice. ice. So yeah. Like, did you guys it pack did. it down a lot? Did it get kind it of It was slick? pretty packed. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like super like hard. Like it wasn't a danger I felt like, but it definitely helped when it was snowing to just like lighten it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. It was was it? Fun. Yeah. I was wondering if it's felt like you're kind of risking getting injured playing on what is somewhat ice at some points right are you slipping all over and is it hard to dive like does um, it hurt to dive diving diving was kind of fun we felt mm-hmm. like penguins like yeah. sliding around or you actually <laughs> slide pretty far yeah Couple we times. had knee pads too oh. yeah and yeah like we all worried about like risk of injury too like right. going into it and that's why when the cleats didn't arrive we're like okay this is like way too sketchy yeah but with the cleats on i never there never was like one play where i was like whoa that was close okay. for me mm-hmm. at least like i felt totally fine which was still kind of shocking because you think what's like landing in snow and yeah moving like every little thing you're slipping but it wasn't too bad Huh. So that's good. Yeah. That is good. I actually like preferred diving too because it was like so hard to like run down a ball. <laughs> yes. That I feel like we covered more court just like sending just the lane out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hmm. And you guys played Russia in the finals. Mm-hmm. It was with Lithuania in the semis and then 
Russia in the finals? Yeah, I think so. Okay. They had a lot yeah. of Russian teams. Russian, like okay. a bit. Seven or eight. Yeah. Was there a decent home field advantage? They're a little bit more Jeez. used to playing this stuff, probably. Because <laughs> yeah. I know that snow volleyball has been around in Europe for like 10 years, but now they're just like starting to popularize it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Were there any teams that stood out that were good, or did you guys try to pick up like any strategies or tips from other teams just watching them? Um, I think the Russian teams seemed like the strongest, um, but I feel like we kind of came up with the idea just how we wanted to strategize with one at the net blocking and then two pulling for defense. Um, it's really funny that you two are both went to school in Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> and Carissa. And Carissa. And Carissa. Someone uh, similarized it to the Jamaican bobsled. Yeah, team. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go That's out there awesome. and kick all the Russians' butts in on their home court. I like. Yeah, it. it was pretty funny too. Definitely the best team we played was that Russian team in the finals, mm-hmm. and they were scouting us for like at least an hour before the finals, like with their coach in the VIP tent, like so intense. I think Carissa like had to go grab like her backpack (laughs) next to them. And they were like, whoa, like they totally fell (laughs) silent. And we're like, not like she was eavesdropping. And we were just so confused. Because she speaks Russian casually. Yeah. 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 (laughs) We were very confused at what they were scouting because we just had no idea what we were doing on the court at all times. So... (laughs) We definitely didn't get into much like copying strategy or anything because we were just kind of going for it out there. Mm-hmm. But the Russians were very into it. I like it. And how about on the mm-hmm. men's side? Oh, well, first of all, who was who was who were the guys uh, representing the U.S.? I know Loy Ball. I don't think Will I know Robbins. the other three mm-hmm. guys. And then two other. Um, there was I'm drawing a blank right now. Kevin. Kevin Owens, Owen. and then our boy Tomas Goldsmith. Yes. And are they yes. indoor players? Um, yes. Or Kevin played at Ball State. Okay. And he's like studying overseas now, and I think playing and getting his masters. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Tomas was actually just. At a tryout in Anaheim for USA Indoor. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so he um, he's still an indoor player, and I think they all play on Team Pineapple. Oh right, so with NBA. volleyball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that what uh, NBA is Nationals, right? Yeah. I never played in it. I don't know. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would have thought that team would be pretty good, right? A bunch of pretty good uh, indoor players. Mm-hmm. Volleyball, who's pretty much a legend, setter indoors. Um, how did they do? Um, they were definitely one of like the stronger teams, mm-hmm. but they had a tough loss over who they played, but they played in the evening and it was like really cold. And I think the snow like had picked up mm-hmm. a lot more than we had already left. Um, it was after the first day and we were running off like a few hours of sleep. So we went back to the hotel and I think, yeah, they were defeated that night and they were out. But, um, the men's team's... They seem really strong, too, across the board. The Russian teams, the men's Russian team won. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of varied. Cool. What would you guys do when you weren't playing? What's what's Moscow like in in December? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, the first night, because we were only there really for two nights since we arrived at our hotel that day of competition at like 5.30 a.m. And then the next night, the hotel had provided dinner for us. For all the athletes. So we ate, went to sleep around like 7 p.m. And then woke up for a Saturday. Um, Saturday night, I went to the Red Square and then just hung out for like a little bit. But it wasn't too exciting. It was, yeah. We had like very little time. We were at the yeah. venue from like 8 a.m. until probably like 6 p.m. every day. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, we were there for 48 hours. So not a lot of hours to do much. That's... But. Crazy. I don't know how you, how did you get a tournament in? How did you play a tournament? <laughs> I think it and was just sleep. like Christmas being right around the corner. It was all just like, like Katie said, a whirlwind and it was yeah. exciting and like, okay, let's go do this, represent the United States, Definitely. come on for Christmas. Yeah. And with some good friends, I'm sure mm. it was yeah. a fun adventure to go on. Very fun. It cracked me up that Carissa, who like you had to convince 
to do a Norseka qualifier to go to the Caribbean in an <laughs> all-inclusive resort, but snow volleyball in Russia. She's like, let's go. <laughs> I know. When I got the text from her, I'm like, I love her energy right now. I'm in. Like, I didn't even, like, read it. I'm like, yes. So, yeah. I think, too, though, like, it really was a good sport for, like, just kind of weird, crafty volleyball. Because, mm-hmm. like, when we are on the court, we would just kind of do weird stuff, and it was hard to defend, so... I think that snow volleyball was like really good for like Chris's type of game. And I thought Emily was like unbelievable at it. She was our big hitter. And then like Allie and me were kind of utility, like ball control players, but it's, it's pretty good for like the crafty player. Yeah. Was there any skill set that didn't, that translated a little bit less from beach to snow? Cause it seems like you said hand setting was easier. I can't imagine that anybody was like bouncing balls. Yeah. jumping didn't look easy yeah it was a little off there um shots were good as long as i mean it's like similar to beach but putting them to where they weren't otherwise i mean people couldn't it was hard to move in the snow so like anything that was a little bit close you could get up but like a bit farther it was down serving i just stood on the ground and served so like i feel like i couldn't even jump serve there <laughs> were you jump floating I added in a little jump float. Yeah. yeah. So. It just, I think, like what you said, it minimized the power. But I felt like our team had the most power. So other teams, like, really weren't bringing that much heat. Um, and I think that's just because the level wasn't, like, super, super high. It wasn't those countries, like, best players. Um, but I thought we, like, our athletes, not I, but no. the other <laughs> athletes on our team had really good like jumping and hitting, which surprised me because I could not jump. <laughs> well, I think with the ball too, like I was trying to hit as hard as I could and it would just be like, dude, <laughs> like, yeah. it was like, uh, and that's kind of how it was on the receiving end too. You would expect like, you know, you see a good approach come in and a good swing and then it was pretty slow pace. So yeah. it wasn't like balls were flying off you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had time to like fix your angles and make that adjustment. So that was kind of easy. And I think that's because of how they designed the ball, which is kind of interesting. Because mm-hmm. the ball, you physically could not like serve it super tough. It was just like so, heavier. Yeah. It was, I mean, it's wet too. It's got to be wet the whole time, right? It yeah. wasn't like as wet as we would think it was though. Because it was a weird... Yeah. Like, felt like um, a waterproof ball, kind of. Yeah, and it mm. never got, like, waterlogged. They might right. have been mm-hmm. switching the balls in and out, but I think we played with the same ball the yeah. majority of the time. Yeah. It was probably Reset. cold enough to where it, Froze. it, yeah, it wasn't going to... Right. Uh, any water would have been frozen anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Well, are you guys happy to be back on the beach? Yes. Are you? Are both you guys training again? Yeah. Or is it mm-hmm. is it now, like, preseason beach volleyball? With yeah. your little snow volleyball off-season adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we trained this morning, and mm-hmm. as I was coming up, we were questioning, like, should we go out? It's kind of raining. We are like, you know, after the snow, <laughs> like, <laughs> really, it doesn't matter. It's nothing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, just off-season training right now. Mm-hmm. Do you have any any tournaments coming up? Because you've, I mean, you've had an unexpected, very busy off season. You went to yeah. the Caribbean. You went to Russia for some snow volleyball. Added some big resume boosters with two gold medals there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Chris and I joke that our off season was like way more travel than our in season, which I was stoked about because to me the beach volleyball season is pretty short if you're just playing you know, during the summer. So to prolong that at all was great. Um, but coming up, I don't have much on the books. So I'm just kind of waiting to see the schedules and then just getting in a lot of off season training. Nice. How about you, Emily? I know last year was like your first, did you get to every event last year? Um, every event except for San Francisco is my grandma's 95th. And I hadn't qualified in the other ones, and I was like, okay, I got to be there for grandma. It's a good good party. (laughs) Yeah. And then um, due to, like, a weird injury that came at the end of the season, I didn't make it to Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I was at every other one. And it was really fun. It was my first time competing in the qualifiers and made it into two main draws. So that was awesome. Yeah. Two Um, big ones, too, with Hermosa Manhattan, right? mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was really cool. Awesome experience. And it was fun finally making it past qualifying. Um, but yeah, for me, 
I feel like even during my off season, I got to be going hard to make up just for lost reps, you know, mm-hmm. and catch up with all the beach players still. So. Yeah. Well, just to uh, let our listeners know, um, let's backtrack a little and just kind of talk about a little bit of what, what your volleyball career was like up until this point. Uh, I guess starting from high school. I don't know your high school uh, resume, but I know you killed it <laughs> after that <laughs> in college and uh, overseas. But you're from here in California originally. Yeah, Los Alamitos. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gina and I went to the same high school. Okay. Yeah, she was Got a senior it. when I was a freshman. Okay. And then you went to the University of Hawaii. Mm-hmm. She killed it out there. Well, he's getting a lot of representation on the Sandcast recently. Yeah. We've had Carissa on. Katie's becoming a regular guest. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Apparently, it's like a drinking game every time I say Hawaii on uh, <laughs> any kind of broadcast. Hopefully, they're drinking something weak. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, you so All-American at, at uh, Hawaii. I, I got to follow you a little bit out there. That was fun playing in Hawaii. Actually, let's mention that because you, you both got to play in Hawaii, Katie yeah. on the beach, Emily, indoors. What was it like playing uh, at the University of Hawaii? Um, I think it was probably the best school you could play at for volleyball. Fan, fan, the fan base is ridiculous, right? Yeah, they're unlike any other fans. They're mm-hmm. unconditionally supporting you and playing in front of you know 10,000 fans i think i had that opportunity a couple of times at the stand sheriff center mm-hmm. um, it was an amazing feeling and something i'll never forget and after leaving hawaii and playing elsewhere i was in switzerland and then i went to korea for a couple of seasons right it's just you miss that so much and it's almost like you take it for granted at the time you're like oh like this is amazing and you know your friends from other universities come out and they play you guys and they're just like wow it's like no other place I've ever been before. Yeah. And it's true. It's such a remarkable culture over there in the Hawaii community. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, because, I mean, earlier you said, you know, you have a lot of catching up to do on the beach. Um, but, like, the first thing that came into my mind was, like, well, you're already very far ahead in a lot of ways in terms of playing in pressure situations. Like, I mean, I don't think I've played in front of 10,000 people no, I don't even think it was 10,000 people at World Championships when I played. And so you've done that regularly and performed in front of that kind of crowd. Plus, you went overseas, played in Switzerland, Korea, which is a lot of pressure playing in Korea because you're the token international player, right? It's basically like, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna fly you out here and you're going to get every set and you're going to need to put every set away. Yeah. Right? right? A little bit like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think you're ahead in... Uh, a few more ways than you'd think on the beach, but uh, I mean, qualifying for uh, what'd you say, two main draws last year, or two of the big main draws last year. Um, I think it's gonna be a, a good next year for you now that you got the, the beach vibes down because it's a little weird switching from yeah. indoor to beach when you're used to the indoor lifestyle and the routines. And, and have, and, yeah, the yeah. coaching and right. organized practices and everything. <laughs> yeah. Katie's been like a mentor to me on the beach. I joke about it, but it's true. When I came out last year and like first started training, we'd get in training together and then we went over to Hawaii and played an AVP next there Mm -hmm. and ran like a few camps. And I like, again, joke about it, but Katie's like teaching these kids volleyball, beach volleyball stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. (laughs) I only played uh, the inaugural year at Hawaii when it came out my sophomore year. Okay. And so I learned a lot then, but that was only, I think, four months of training on the beach with an actual coach and drilling everything out and stuff. And I haven't had that again, but um, I'll be going out to Hawaii, I told you, next week mm-hmm. with Danny and getting that kind of coaching vibe back and all that good stuff. I love it. Yeah, I was just out. I just got back yesterday and I was uh, training with those same coaches. There's a lot mm-hmm. of value out there for sure. Yeah. That'll be great for your game. And when you were in Korea, too, like, you won, I was cracking up, you won best foreign player of the year? Yeah, my first year. (laughs) I didn't know that that was a thing. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't either. (laughs) I can't imagine if we had an award like that in the U.S., best foreign player, the the political correctness police wouldn't have it. That's what I mean, though, like, of pressure. It's like, there's a title for, like, the foreign player, like, that's a thing. I mean, each team gets one, basically, kind of thing? Yeah, each team has one foreigner, Mm -hmm. and then... None of the girls really speak any English at all. So we had translators with us 24-7. 
And across the board, like all the girls, because we would talk to each other, um, me and the other foreigners, and everyone's translator was our best friend and just very cool people. Mm -hmm. But um, it was a struggle at times, especially that was my second year playing professionally overseas. So I kind of knew what it entailed, but it was um, some of the girls straight out of college, first time over. And to start in Korea is kind of gnarly for them. Right, for sure. Yeah. And um, I got lucky. I had a really good team, a really strong middle, opposite, and another outside. So that helped me. But there was a lot more pressure on some of the other foreigners. And I just was, I think I got pretty fortunate with my team. And how does it feel like, you know, a lot of people talk about, yeah, playing main draw, it's, there's a lot of pressure, but qualifiers is way more pressure you put on yourself. Not because there's no outside pressure really, but um, how does it kind of compare to when you, you came out to the beach and you're, you've invested all this time, but, but nothing's guaranteed. Like you didn't sign a contract to say yeah. you're going to get paid either way. You flew yourself out there, you put in the work and now you might not even get to play in the tournament, you know? It's right. like a whole different type of pressure, but how did, how did that feel for you? Um, for me, just when I first got into like the beach volleyball scene, I talked to a lot of players, some like horror stories of people's qualifiers, Katie having one, just <laughs> about traveling and then getting so close and not making it. And so I kind of just went into each one with low expectation. Um, and I had good partners, jumped around with different partners due to like cancellations or just reasons why people couldn't be there. Um, so it was a good experience playing with a lot of different girls and getting a feel for that. And each qualifier, I kind of got like closer and closer and closer. Um, and then the two here locally finally got into. But next year, I think I'll have definitely a different outlook. I'm sure I'll be in the qualifiers again and hoping to get past that for every tournament. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. And I think I'll have a lot more pressure going in this next season. And you, you finished with Alexa Strange. Mm -hmm. Is that a partnership that's continuing? I don't mean to put like partnership on uh, blast if not <laughs> um yeah so we practiced this morning we're still training in the off season and we've talked about our plans together um for this next season coming up but she actually recently got a really good opportunity to be a broadcaster for the new league in india what? that's what? the new men's league i believe and it's not women's yet these but, new um, volleyball things just keep popping up. <laughs> yeah, this came out of nowhere. <laughs> no, right. But Alexa is actually going to go over to Hawaii with me for training um, for that, like, 10-day period. So we'll get a lot of reps in there together. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens right now. Just kind of leaving a lot of options open. And if it works out, great. But if it doesn't, then hopefully something else comes up, too. If it doesn't, then you can always go to the eight, eight event snow tour. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you always got snow volleyball. Always got that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they uh, help the prize money for that one. Yeah. By the yeah. time people go full time. <laughs> now, do you guys have anything else that you want to add? Anything that we might have missed about your Moscow snow adventures? Any good stories? Any more good stories? Mm, yeah, there's like there's only so much that could have happened in 48 yeah. hours. <laughs> there's a lot of good ones yeah, for 48 true. hours. Um, Jeez. I feel like after we... Took care of the whole cleats fiasco. It was kind of smooth sailing. Yeah. And it was, we had a really good time, like laughing yeah. on and off the court um, through the playing the whole time. Mm -hmm. It was funny when people would fall in the snow due to like the missing cleat toes, toes <laughs> on the cleats, um, stuff like that. <laughs> but I can't think of like another funny story in particular. Do you guys see this sport? Um being able to actually get to the point where it can be a, a winter Olympic sport? Does it have the potential for that in your... I feel like the winter Olympics are super cool because mm -hmm. there's all these sports that, like, for us, we don't really, like, even know of sometimes. So right. I feel like it could fit in there. I don't think, obviously, it would have the popularity as beach volleyball does right. in the Summer Olympics. And I think that's probably what they're kind of considering is, mm -hmm. wow, this sport attracts the most viewers for the Summer Olympics. Maybe, like, how can we incorporate that into the Winter Olympics? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it could work. I mean, yeah. I'm thinking of it like from a business standpoint, as an as a beach athlete, the way to make a lot of money from sponsors and stuff is to have that label, that Olympic label, right? If they make this an Olympic sport, I might I might seriously consider going taking a little beach time off halfway through. <laughs> 
And going and getting that, first of all, you're playing in an Olympics, which is a once in a lifetime yeah. opportunity. But playing in the Winter Olympics, and you're going to be an Olympian after for the next two years. You can sell that to sponsors, absolutely. And then you might be able to go play in the indoor Olympics. I mean, sorry, beach Olympics. Might as well make it into a two. Well. Indoor yeah. three. Yeah. <laughs> indoor two. I'm going to call up John Sproul. Three times. Yeah. Sport. Yeah. Multi-sport Olympian. Yeah. That's what we're going for now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Have, have, I wonder if there's been athletes that have played in different sports. In different, like in summer and winter. Mm, that'd be interesting. Well, I know research. that there are like... Because there are multiple different types of snowboarding and skiing events. Because there are the trick oh, yeah. events well, and there are the race events too. Yeah. And it's really rare because there was... Um, it's not like swimming where you can win like 12 medals. Yeah, I forget. There was, a, uh, <laughs> I think, a Norwegian girl who was like one of the first to do snow cross and the half pipe and medal in both. And uh, it was like kind of crazy. But the Winter Olympics are weird. I wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised at all. Just yeah. like covering it. Dude, like you have the ski jump. Yeah. People just... Go down and do one jump. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. they're jumping like 300 yards. And that's yeah. an event. Yeah. Like, I, I see no reason why snow volleyball wouldn't be an yeah, event. Yeah. It, it, it can't cost a lot. It yeah. went on. Yeah. It uh, wouldn't be that weird. Right. Considering that skiing with your rifle and then shooting a target and then <laughs> skiing again. I love the sport. description of the biathlon. It's like, what do you do? You, uh, well, you ski and you shoot stuff. So <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's so it's bad. a mixture of... <laughs> Shooting things. This is how we survived skiing. in the Cold War okay. and we made it a sport. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> so it has the potential, I guess. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And the way some of the teams were, um, Russian teams and Turkish teams stick out most, but they had coaches. Coaches weren't allowed to stand on the sidelines and coach, but they were up in like the small stadium screaming at their players. <laughs> so like obviously they're taking it seriously, and like Katie said, scouting wise too. So I wouldn't be surprised if it does become a winter sport. And we'll try if you want to pick it up. I can yeah. definitely watch some film and be a coach. <laughs> problem, yeah. problem is the whole hands thing. I, mm, I don't know if I'm yeah, going to be able to feel was, my hands out there. Stuff. Oh, yeah. the toes. Hand warmers, right? The toes are bigger concern. Toes. Oof. I don't know. Katie, Katie's my hands froze once. <laughs> I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna look like a clown out there, like with like double shoes or something, and like five pairs of gloves. Looks yeah. like but a, hell, Disney, a Disney mascot. <laughs> hey, the more gloves you have on, the bigger your hands are for like blocking. Right? Oh, yeah. That's like a good more space. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you could hit it really hard, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to stick to you. It's like a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> I had punched a ball once on a hit and had success. And I tried to do it again, and it just went flat. <laughs> so that was like the end of it. But it got more pace on it than just an open hand hit. Mm-hmm. Just a nice fister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It, it must suck too when you really like actually get a hold of it and it just like <laughs> sticks in the snow instead of like being able to bounce it. It's like, oh, that was lame. <laughs> I don't think the highlight reel is uh, all that good. Yeah, no sizzle reel. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's no volleyball. It was pretty amazing though. The filming was really good. Like, my parents actually set alarms throughout the night. I learned this afterwards, but they were like up watching every game and the announcing and filming was really good so i mean that's also a positive as far as Definitely. like yeah. the, the sport moving forward good now we just need that day. on the beach all the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always have that yeah oh awesome yeah well we uh well katie since we've had you on we'll uh we'll let emily take the last question this Perfect. time so the last question we ask every guest and because you now specialize in three different types of volleyball we've got <laughs> snow indoor and beach yeah, we'll really. just say uh if you had to give any piece of advice to an up-and-coming volleyball player of any discipline, <laughs> what would that piece of advice be? Um, I think just get as many reps as you can, as many touches. I grew up playing middle my whole life and then transitioned to an outside hitter um, later in my college career. And I think I missed out on a lot of passing and defense reps. And now coming to the beach, all that everything's kind of exposed. You need everything. Um in your little toolkit. And I think the more touches you get and just the more you keep playing, and I know a lot of players say this too, but that'll just help you in every aspect of your game, whether it's indoor, beach, or snow. Yeah. And now, <laughs> we- bad weather is no excuse not to practice anymore. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. right. <laughs> Different outlook. Yeah. <laughs> It was raining this morning, and I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> now you guys, you played in snow. Yeah, I flew in from mid- at midnight last night from Hawaii. I was just like, 
God damn it. Why did I do this? <laughs> Why am I back again? <laughs> well, thank you, ladies, tons for coming on. Congrats, Katie, thank on two you. gold medals in a row. Emily <laughs> on picking up a gold medal in snow. Thank you. Um, see you guys on the beach or snow or indoor, whatever surface or dirt, whatever surface <laughs> you may <great>. choose. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm glad I was a part of this. It was really cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Thanks, guys. Shoot, shoots. Shoots. Ha, 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 ha.